up. Um, yeah. The 2015 manifesto got me interested in the Green Party. I'd never been interested in it before. Um, mm. How did a party that produced one of the most radical reforming manifestos of the second half of the 21st century, including the Labour 45, um, mm. throw out the garbage which I felt the 2017 manifesto was? It was lightweight, woolly, and it didn't have the all-important policy EC661, which was the uh, taking yeah. back the, the, the creation of money um, process into into public administration. If you know, if not yeah. like a, a you know a, 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 a kind of a cross-balance committee sort of thing. Uh, yeah. How did that happen? What 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 is happening with what happened with consultation under Natalie Bennett that didn't happen under the Bartley Lucas regime? Yeah, well, I can't give you you know the inner workings. I, you know, don't forget, I don't live in London. I'm not part of GPEX, you know, the the the, the, the executive. Um, I live in Scarborough, and I'm not. Um, although the although the people in, in those people, the leadership know me, I'm not on the Christmas card list and I'm not pals with them or anything. So I don't know from the inside. What I do know is a couple of things. One, there's been a long, long effort on behalf of some, a, a group of people to get that policy about monetary reform and taking the power of money creation away from the banks. It had taken a long time to get that passed. It was a big struggle. Um, and many people in the Green Party it got passed, but without a lot of people in the Green Party really understanding the significance of it. Who's now on the um, monetary um, uh, study group, um, ex uh, Bank of England? Um, I don't know him. By all accounts, he's very good in, on lots of things, but he's very much against that policy because he, he takes a very old fashioned view of what money is and, and you know, therefore he, he thinks austerity is necessary and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. And so there's been a kind of a pulling back um, on those committees from that um, uh, the policy and that radical policy, which I think is a massive mistake, given that there was that, that pullback and the fact that, that I think at the national level for uh -huh. the election, it took them by surprise. That didn't help. I mean, I, I told my I told my local party on the day of uh, the count that we had, I said, eighteen months to get ready for the next election. So uh -huh. I was a bit off. Well, well you were, you were pressing. You, you you were you know. <laughs> It was, yeah, it you, very, you made very a pretty good shout. Uh, you know, another election, and and I said it would be. I, I thought it would be um, uh, Theresa and Boris. Um, but the other way around. Mm -hmm. I thought I actually thought Boris would be the leader and Theresa May would be Home Secretary and it turned out the other way around. Um, well, he's a devout but there was liberal, a, but a, 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 to, Just to finish off, the last thing is that our present leadership have a very different set of concerns. So had they had a, a, a focus on um, on the important getting get democratic control back, if they saw the lack of democratic control as an important thing, I think they would have. Then the uh, they would have pushed a more radical um, manifesto like 2015. But that wasn't their focus. They weren't focused on particularly on the TTIP. Um, I and others pushed that, and and it sort of. But it was a push we had to make. That wasn't the focus. The focus of our present leadership has always been anti-Brexit, um, pro-immigration. Um, anti-racist and identity politics. Now, I'm not saying that that's what got spoken about the most. Um, and so I don't think that they would have noticed particularly that, that the radical parts of our financial stuff had dropped away. And they, they didn't, I mean, I, I personally disappointed that it was Corbyn who, who spoke most forcefully about um, um, about 
austerity and um, the banks being too big to fail and too big to prosecute. I was really cheered that he did, but disappointed that it wasn't us at the forefront of that. Well, and John McDonnell as well, who who has taken some yes. advice from some, uh, like Richard Murphy, for instance. Yeah, good man. Uh, who who's a very good writer on um, monetary he knows economics. His stuff, yeah. He does know his stuff. Um, you've been interviewed by Real Media, who also interviewed him, and I'd recommend mm -hmm. you know to our viewers that yeah, Real they, Media, I think, are very good. They take a look at the Real I Media. I don't see eye to eye on everything, but I like them. Yeah. And, well, they've interviewed David Graeber as well, of course, who wrote Dead mm -hmm. First 5,000 Years, which... Um, yeah. So I mean, we do need to get to grips with what it isn't. And, and I, I, I do think if the Green Party doesn't... If, if ever that policy of taking control of a monetary agent away from the private banks, if, if we lose that... Then, it's a matter um, of political pedagogy, really, David, and, and your writing yeah. is so brilliant, uh, uh, illuminating these sort of dark corners of, of stuff, mm. you know. The, the thing that bothers me is, amongst many, is the, the, the endless stuff about, have you costed this um, uh, policy? Have you, have you got a balanced budget? Uh, yeah. And um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any idea of what your policies might cost. But the notion that you've got to come out with a balance sheet with all your policies and what they'll cost and your income and it comes to a grand ding, zero, zero expenditure, balanced budget, mm. is cobblers. This notion that um, the government shouldn't have debt. I mean, never mind whether a government should fund itself through the sale of debt or not, which I obviously think they shouldn't, and there's no reason for them, but let's suppose that they do. Mainstream economists will go, oh my God, you can't have a government just willy-nilly printing up debt and, and just make increasing the money supply, because you'll end up like, um, like Weimar Germany, they'll say. And yet, the same people who say that it never even occurred to them. They have no problem with the private banks printing up money and debt out of nothing. Yeah, and well, you think, wait a minute, yeah. why is it, why will the sky fall on our head if a government prints up money, but it's a fabulous thing if the private banks print up money? Which is what they do. They, they print up debt. Why is it okay for them to print up debt but not governments? It, it, it just seems to me that there's a basic failure to engage clearly with the the most basic part of the political problem. Yeah, well, it's ideological, we know that. It's, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's not a necessary condition of any political argument that that should be so. It's a, it, it, it's it, a matter it of faith. But bother you, Roger, that, that, that we have an army of highly paid so-called experts and pundits on, writing for newspapers and on our televisions and they don't question it. Well, they're priests. They, they, I mean, they, they I mean, swallow yeah. this assumption. Um, the same army without... exists. They are pushing an agenda, and their job is not to think critically or to push the bounds of knowledge. Their job is to peddle the official narrative, which you know, the we're Green all Party can't to... afford to, to go along with. The Green Party can't afford to accept those assumptions in its when we talk about politics, we have to, because if we accept the assumptions, then we lose, wins the argument. Mm -hmm. So we have to say, look, 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 hang on a second, your, your starting assumption is simply wrong, and get them to answer, why is it fine for banks to create money out of nothing and rack up debt, issue debt, but the same amount issued by a government, you're saying the sky would fall on our heads. How does that work? Just explain that for me first. Mr. Radio 4. Well, they define the Go boundary on. limits as well of the discussion, which, you know, anyone that knows anything about algorithms know that the boundaries are very important. It's mm. not just the starting point, but, you know, also the boundaries within which you yeah, make where the you're predictions. But that's um, what the Green Party has to do. I truly believe that. If we don't do that, we're, we're a, a pressure group on the boundary. Well, I don't want to be a pressure group. I don't think the country needs a pressure group on the boundary. This, this nation, I firmly believe, desperately needs a, green, a radical Green Party to be an electable party, a party that people think 
If they were voted into power, they would know how to run the country. Okay. What they don't want to know is they're a country that knows how to complain by the sidelines. Yeah. Well, what I think a lot of people struggle with, particularly like me, I, I mean, I sat on the fence on Brexit, and then as things developed in the States, it became better and better. But right now, um, I think it's still going to be fine. Um, and a neoliberal EU, why be in it? I mean, you don't want to be out of it with a more neoliberal government than they've got. But the choice was you know, uh, fascism under May or fascism under the EU in the sense that May was like General Franco and <laughs> Mr Juncker's like Stalin. And, and, and well, I, I, I partly agree with you. I mean, I, I was in favour of Remain. Um, but my the argument that I made at the time was it's not about what you might want to leave, but what you'll be left with. H had we been... Had had we had um, a Corbyn-like government, then I would have probably voted for. I can, un but I, I didn't want to have to leave the EU and have an un um, uh, an unopposed, unfettered, globalist right-wing government. I I, I, I agree with have. you, uh, but I agree with you. A lot of the reasons for staying in the EU, and there were many I could I listed at the time. A lot of them were legacy things, you know, all the stuff about um, environmental protection, worker protection, phytosanitary protection, they were all from the golden age of the EU. And if you had been in, a, you know, for, for those of us who were in the TTIP fight, the big fight against the big trade agreement, in that fight, the, the enemy, the people pushing, absolutely pushing for the dismantling and the, the selling off of all those protections yes. was the EU. Yeah. Let's they just, were the ones. Can we look who, at that? You know, we had the document saying, well, we're, we're, you know, looking, uh, getting the submissions. And, um, and people like Malmström were liars. They were yeah. consistently lying and misrepresenting yeah. things. So if you were in that fight, you... It was very difficult to look at the EU and say, well, these will be the people that will save us from a, 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 a horrible yeah. um, Tory government. OK. Well, <sighs> TTIP is dead for now, but CETA... Only for now. Yeah. It's like the undead. Unless you well, shot it in the head, yeah. it will suddenly but stand C back C up. But CETA is upon us and real. And you yes, had the yes, Wallonian uh, delay. Uh, then they got it through the Parliament, didn't they? Yeah, and, CETA is a disaster, uh, and, uh, and TISA is coming after us. Now, now it's out to the different countries to pass, except the European Court of Justice passed the ruling about mm -hmm. trade deals not needing to be granted by yes. the countries outside. Yes. A, um, a, have you been following mine, that one at all? Um, I mean, I must confess I've not been following it that closely. Right. Sorry. I, so, have you been following that one, David? Because I'd quite like yeah, to know... Yeah. So, so what's going to happen with that? Is it going to be something which Britain is bound to it, it, after Brexit? Well, assuming we, Brexit we will happens? be bound to it under the, under the, um, the um, what do they call it, the Twilight Clause or whatever it is, Sunset Clause. Um, yeah, we will be bound to it as far as I can see. I mean, the, the thing about the law surrounding that is they are essentially making it as they go along. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I can see, we will be bound by that. Um, and there's a, I think it's a seven year, I think, I think they call it a sunset clause or something. Um, so yeah, I think we will be yeah. bound by that. Yeah. Assuming it goes through and there isn't some sort of challenge to the anti-democratic way of, I mean, it's the EU's answer to everything is if people look like they're going to vote against it, just don't get them to vote. Just take or it back Or if they vote the wrong way, get them to do it again. The Irish can tell you about that. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. So, so you, why, you, why is the green leadership saying, you know, well, come on, let's get back in there? It, it's uh, the 2015 well, manifesto yeah, had, had a policy for a referendum. And thinking, as I did, this is a disaster. Um, um, at least there are um, safeguards in Europe. Um, which they haven't dismantled yet and, may, and won't be able to dismantle as easily 
as they can dismantle things that are just UK law. Do, do you I, I think it probably is true, but it's it's. It's, it's a vain weak, hope, um, I would say. Weak argument, I think. Europe should be reformed, and I I live in Sweden. I think Sweden does Europe really quite well, but the Swedes yeah. can do consensus. And British people, like you and I, well, you're an Englishman, I'm a Welshman, we don't do consensus terribly well. It's not really in us. Uh, yeah. Because we want to get on. But my, you know, I, I, tell you, I mean, I, 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 what's worried me most about the, the fallout from, from Brexit hasn't been the specifics. What's saddened me and worried me for the future is um, what I see as a righteous intolerance. Mm -hmm. on both sides of the art of the debate that that it's an intolerance of the other person's position but based on a sense of righteousness and it, it reminds me of nothing so much as the the, ref, the counter reformation where it wasn't enough to disagree with the other side you you couldn't just say well let's agree to disagree because the other side was about to bring down the wrath of god and so it was fine to slaughter them yeah and yeah. it's that kind of righteous intolerance uh, which I see as a rising kind of poisoning of our political discussion, which I find very, well, very... If I right may say, I mean, I, I think the Green Party is very good at that sort of righteous witch hunting, as, you know... Some part. In some terms part. of burning people for climate change denial. And, I mean, I think a party that talks of climate beliefs, which Caroline regularly does, mm. is actually in the realms of cult, you know it's it's in the realms of being a cult and a personality cult well you know we, we disagree about the about well about, about climate, climate change, change but perhaps the, the, but but i do I, I i i don't think the green party is i wouldn't want to say the green party is more guilty than anybody else but it's there in the green party it's there in the country in in in, in every um I mean, our part, other parties, as we say, just the tenor of the times has become righteously intolerant. And I don't like it, David. I mean, our other our other parties, as misanthropic as the green, as as the radical green. By misanthropic, you mean the sort of well, race doesn't survive nature. Yeah, I often see comments like, "Oh, what a terrible species we are," and. We yeah. deserve everything we get. Oh, we are absolutely. All... I well, happen I mean, to think the human race there is a are beautiful people like species. That in the Green Party, and um, um, there are people like that um, in, in other parties. Uh, it's not a very helpful kind of thing. It, 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 those comments, I think, are just people who aren't looking for a way forward. Um, mm. But um, I mean, would I you think say in the Green the... Party it's counterbalanced by a lot of other good things. I mean, I, I would rather have the misanthropy or the misanthropy, however you say it, that you find in the Green Party than the out-and-out -out callousness of the Tories. Um, yeah, well, I mean, no doubt it is there, and it, it exists in the Labour Party too. I mean, there are there are callous people of all political shades and colours, and there are there are there are very nice people I, in all I, of those I, parties. I, well, which is our problem. I think our, our problem is another very, very difficult debate. And uh, 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 I, I think this is kind of a systemic, which I think is is hurting us. I mean, I, uh, would you say that debate in the Green Party is more binary than it ought to be for a correct sort of pedagogical approach to a scientific matter such as climate change? I, I, I don't know, to be honest. What, what it offers, we don't have... I, I don't see as much debate going on as I'd like, and, and um, it's like leadership, it's, it's, it's Would difficult. you debate, um, say, Piers Corbyn about climate change? I mean, we could host a, a thing and you two could discuss climate change, and, and uh, he, he's a... a, a you know, a full-on what 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 you would call denier. What I would. Call I'm not a, sure. Uh, is he a denier? I think he just says that there are different. There are there are different he, elements, he, and, he, and he, there he, are uncertainties he, in places where some scientists pretend there aren't. 
I, I think that Piers feels that the CO2 AGW hypothesis has been proven, uh, has been falsified by evidence already. Um, okay, that's the CO2 thing. I mean, that, really that doesn't mean that there isn't global warming. There's a paper just out um, which is saying that the pause is actually real. The the uh, all the debunking of that has come back and bit them in the arse basically. Um, and uh, the the pause is actually even Michael Mann, the famous hooky the hockey stick man, has has apparently mm. uh, begrudgingly admitted that less than optimal in there oh, but i mean there's no doubt about that the the, the model yeah but I, the pause think, is the thing David. I think it, 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 when it, scientists got pushed into pretending they were more certain about more accurate than they were perhaps for for what they felt was good i think that was a mistake would be much better to say look the models do have problems and um there are areas in the models which are really unknown I think you're much better to be honest about that. Um, yeah, I, well, I mean, the East Anglia thing I genuinely was think swept that under the, the carpet very quickly. Is not, is not wrong, and that the, that the risks of taking the other view that saying, well, because we're not really sure about this, we should pretend that we should just say, well, maybe we don't need to act on it. I think that's wrong. Well, I, I, somewhat, I, I saw a, 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 a cartoon which I quite like, which I can't reproduce for you, but essentially it said, imagine. A lower energy using, lower polluting, uh, more economically just world because we thought that this would be the answer to uh, climate change and then found that we hadn't needed to because climate world wasn't, wasn't true. Wouldn't that be dreadful? Well, yes, it would be dreadful, but I mean, one has to, <laughs> you know, to the, do the right yeah, thing. If one models reason. climate, one deals in probabilities and, and the, oh. the, 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 the probabilities of some of the uh, downsides of creating fuel poverty while, while um, there's no need to create fuel poverty. Yeah, well, uh, there's no need. To, that's one of the problems of of the of of the way. Particularly, I think that um, big money global g corporate responses are that they that their solutions might create things like fuel poverty or temperature poverty. Well, I, I'm happy for people to use less fuel as long as they're still warm and can cook their dinner. Um, I, I don't think there's any need for solutions to create those problems. I think if you're offered solutions that do create those problems, you need to ask yourself, why is this person offering me this rubbish solution? And usually it would be because it's rubbish for you, but we'll earn them money. Well, the rubbish solutions which I see coming, a lot of them come from the Green Party. Um, and you cannot, I've been banned from various discussion groups in the Green Party for being a you know, so-called climate denier. I mean, as if well, I, I would deny true. a climate. I mean, you know, if it's, I mean, you know, the climate exists. Who's denying that there's a climate? I mean, it, sure. it, it's just such a specious argument is it really is I, I find it quite frustrating the mm -hmm. lack of the lack of knowledge in discourse and the but close mindedness that, 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 in fairness that's always going to be the, the, the case that in any party a, a, a lot of the people in the party are not going to be experts they learn and some people who they think know more I mean most people in the Labour Party are not experts on supply and demand of labour and how the economy works. Well, but they just except that, that we've know. got Caroline saying and criticising the Queen's speech, not enough climate change, uh, criticising the debates in the election debates, not enough about climate change. Well, well I think that was true, Roger. I think, I think it, it was... It, I mean, in, in the, the election was notable... Do, I mean, yeah. do you do you think if it had been talked about more, the Green Party would have got more votes? Because I doubt it somehow. I think the vote would have collapsed more out there now, where yeah. well, that's scepticism is actually a valid idea. point of view. Yeah, it's a separate debate, I think. Mm. I mean, I, I've gone on record for saying, I think sometimes we, uh, 